Good morning, everyone. My name is Sandeep. I am the co-founder of Code Tigers. Uh, welcome to the sixth episode of the Code Tigers live show. Uh, the show that brings to you a young coder and a slightly older guest every week. And together, they try a new code-related activity over the next 60 minutes. Uh, first of all, my apologies for starting a little late. Uh, we had a little bit of a technical goof up. These things do happen because of uh, uh, the, the lockdown, everyone is working remotely. So without further delay, uh, let me introduce you to the two guests for today. Uh, let me first bring on the screen, Dr. Gargi Dasgupta. Hi, Gargi. Good morning. Hello. Hi, Sandeep. Hello, everyone. How are you doing this morning? Oh, I'm happy and very excited to be on this show. So I'm all pepped up and to meet Kashvi as well. Great. So uh, it's a singular honor to have a, uh, such a senior person from the tech world, uh, the tech industry in India. Uh, Gargi, as uh, some of you may know, represents uh, or is looking after the research uh, vertical, research division. She heads the research division for IBM India. She's the director of research there. Uh, along with her uh, other role, which is this being the CTO of IBM India as well as South Asia. So uh, without any further delay, I'd like to uh, welcome you all, uh, welcome Gagi to the show. And uh, Gagi, if you can tell us a little bit about what you basically do at IBM. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. So I'll, I'll start with, you know, what is research? So I first of all, folks, I have this really fun job of uh, leading the research labs for IBM. Uh, so research by its definition is a little bit uh, more um, focused on longer term things, right? Longer term technology, which really means I can I can hire a lot of smart people and get them to do a lot of fun, uh, fun things. And really, my job there is to, you know, help connect the dots. For example, if there's some research in a group that's being done, on how do we make conversational agents like chatbots, right? Um, respond to a human uh, intelligent, you know, intelligently respond to human emotions. Uh, so I take that work and let's say there's another piece of work that's going on um, in our speech group. That is, how do I understand when someone talks to me in a mixed language like Hindi and English or Bengali and Marathi, right? Which in India, as you can imagine, we even with our parents, we don't speak in one language, right? So, uh, so I can take those two together. And what we have is a very cool solution for multilingual uh, speech assistant, right? So I, I have a fun job um, uh, getting to more uh, serious things. Of course, uh, you know, IBM uh, provides uh, the hardware, the systems, the computers, the servers, as well as the software that since for many mission critical uh, applications, which means, for example, if we take COVID, right, um, and uh, all major health providers, uh, major banks, all that, you know, your parents, uh, I'm sure, really care about, you know, the health of the family, uh, the finances, all of those systems in middleware is run by IBM. So as part of research, my job is also to infuse AI into these systems Right, which means that if there is, um, you know, if, if you're trying to admit someone who's really sick in COVID, uh, at that moment, the system should not fail, right? We should be able to be able to do that seamlessly. And for you and for all customers, it's a click of a button, but it's our job to make sure those systems are up and running. So that's, that's the serious thing. But yeah, so I have a fun job um, in research. Uh, two things, uh, maybe uh, good good for you guys to maybe look up later if you don't know. Uh, so a couple of years or, uh, earlier, I think 2011-12, we, uh, we built a computer that could play uh, a quiz game called Jeopardy. And actually, uh, it beats the human in the quiz game, right? So the machine intelligent has really become really, really intelligent. And then in 2019, we launched, um, uh, so, so that was, of course, the Watson uh, in 2011. And in 2019, we lost, uh, launched Debater, which can now you know, sit and debate with you. So these are all fun videos on YouTube. You should look it up. Um, and, and that's really what my job is. Thanks, Andy. Wow. So uh, yeah, IBM Watson is something that uh, some of us have heard about. And in fact, in 
the Code Tiger live show last week, we had a young coder who built a chatbot using IBM Watson at the heart of it. So very good. Uh, I, I, th I, if I'm uh, updated correctly, I think uh, IBM Watson is a better doctor uh, than an average physician, and it, it's probably a better <laughs> lawyer than an average lawyer. Is that correct? I, I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it definitely can help doctors, and it definitely can help lawyers, and I, it helps. So the way I would say it, Sandeep, that it helps an average doctor to get much better at his job by being able okay. to go through tons and tons of data and putting in front of the doctor all the artifacts that he or she needs to consult before taking the decision, right? So it's okay. all human and AI working together. So that's how I would say it. So it's kind of complementing these professions. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. See, humans are best at decision making, right? Given okay. A and B, they can quickly say what. But humans cannot store terabytes of data and figure out whether it should be A or B or A or C, right? And that's that's what the computer is really good at. Excellent. OK, so now let me bring you to the uh, other guest. Let me introduce you quickly to the other guest on the show today, a young coder who's in grade 6. Hi, Kashvi. How are you this morning? Hello, sir. I'm fine. Hi, so Kashvi. Yeah, I'm so Hello, happy to meet you. Hi. So Kashvi is a student of class six. Uh, she is in Maxford School, Dwarka. Uh, we have had a few students from this school, uh, Gargi. The school is actually at the forefront of, uh, uh, you know, imbibing, encouraging kids to learn new technologies. So they've been learning to code even before the new uh, education policy announced that uh, coding is now supposed to be uh, mandatory in the Indian curriculum. I, I don't know if you're updated on that, but. Uh, a yeah. couple of weeks ago, the government announced that from grade six okay. onwards, the kids in India have to start learning code. So, uh, Kashmi probably is, is at the perfect age where she is now starting to learn at uh, uh, you know learn all these new exciting technologies. And uh, she has and then she's planned. already and she's already ahead. So yay for Kashmi! <laughs> yeah, uh, Kashmi, what are, what is it that you've planned for? Uh, to, uh, the session today. Today I will be discussing a Star Wars about Star Wars, and today we can create a game about uh, Star Wars. Okay, excellent. Oh, wow. uh, I am I'm, I'm a big fan of the Star Wars series. Of me too, me too. So who's your favorite character, Kashmir in Star Wars? Um, actually I have not seen the movie yet, but soon I'll see it. Oh, you should, you should. I showed it to my kids. Okay, for me, it's Yoda. Yeah. Yeah. When I okay. see it, I'll tell you. Excellent. Right, yeah. So, Kashmir, you ready? Yes. Okay, great. So, uh, yeah, you can quickly start by sharing your screen, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So looking at the comments, uh, Gagi, and uh, we have kids coming in, tuned in from almost all over the country. We have kids from a lot of kids from different parts of the country, kids from army public school, it seems. There's a school in Alwar which is tuned in. So yeah, yes. very, very good and encouraging response. Yes. OK, Kashvi, I'm going to add your screen. Yeah. So I have just started uh, with a new tab. Uh, I'll type in code.org. Then this is the site of code.org. Then uh, you can see at the top left corner, there's a learn option. I'll click on it. OK. And then I'll scroll down. And then in the eye of code, there's an option for view more. So okay. I'll so click for on our, it. For our viewers, Tashvi uh, is going to take us through an hour of code activity which is themed around Star Wars. Yes. So now I'll again scroll down and the first one is Star Wars. So I'll again click on it. And now there are two options, blocks and JavaScript. So below blocks there, are no, there is an option for try now. I'll click on try now. Mm -hmm. And now we can start with our hour of code Star Wars game. I'll just play the video. Are you able to hear the? Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Hi, I'm Kathleen Kennedy, and I'm the producer of Star. Uh, so it's glitching, I guess. Star Wars: The Force Awakens. Yes, nice. Okay. Today okay. you'll Bye. be working with one of our stars, BB-8. BB-8 is a <laughs> spherical droid. Everything he does and every movement he makes is controlled by computer software. Mm -hmm. Computer science impacts every industry, from marketing to healthcare to film. In fact, hundreds of computer engineers work together to make a film like The Force Awakens. Hi, I'm Rachel Rose. I'm a senior R&D engineer at ILM, and uh, I lead the animation and creature development team. In The Force Awakens, I'm responsible for helping the artists develop rigs, which are the parts of the character that move, that allow the character to look very believable in a galaxy far, far away. In the next hour, we're going to build our own Star Wars game that will teach you the basic concepts of programming. Usually programming is all text, but we're going to use blocks here so that we can drag and drop to write the programs. To start off, we're going to work with Ray to program BB-8 to walk to collect all of the scrap parts. Your screen is split into three parts. On the left is the Star Wars game space, where code will run. The instructions for each level are written below the game space. This middle area is the toolbox, and each of these blocks is a command that BB-8 can understand. The white space on the right is called the workspace, and this is where we're going to build our program. If I drag the move left block to our workspace and press run, what happens? BB-8 moves left one block on the grid. And what if I want BB-8 to do something after the move left block? I can add another block to our program. I'm going to choose the move up block, and I'll drag it underneath my move left block until the highlight appears, and then I'll drop it, and the two blocks will snap together. When I press run again, BB-8 will perform the commands that are stacked from top to bottom on our workspace. If you ever want to delete a block, just remove it from the stack and drag it back into the toolbox. After you've hit run, you can always hit the reset button to get BB-8 back to the start. Now, let's get rolling. So our screen is divided into four parts. One is the game space. The second one is the instruction box. It's important to read the instruction box. The third is the toolbox in which you can drag the blocks. All the commands are in the toolbox. And the fourth one is the workspace. So in the instruction box, it says we need that scrap metal. BB-8, can you get it? So my cursor is around the scrap metal, and the scrap metal is two steps to the right. So I'll move two steps to the right. That means I'll drag two move right from the toolbox. One is already there, so I have to drag only one. Now I'll run it. So now I'll click on continue to go to the second puzzle. We didn't now have anything like this, uh, Gargi, in our back back when we were in school right no absolutely yeah this is really really easy and uh, fun for kids to use i was i was discussing the same with uh, my son so home that we never had these you yeah. know these ideas do you remember uh, uh, what was the first programming language that you ever worked with and what was the first code that you ever wrote yeah, I, I do remember the language. It was Pascal. And oh. um, of course, it was definitely uh, not in class six. It was much later, right? Uh, when when we actually took up computer science um, in undergrad. So it was much, much later. Uh, but th this is a good opportunity to also introduce my 16-year-old uh, son, uh, Soham Sandeep. So I'll ask him to come in the frame. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know. You can see both of us. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Shohan. How are you? How are you? Yeah. So you, uh, I, I hear that you also code yourself. Is that correct? Yeah, I recently started going into data analysis. And Excellent. OK. So I'm sure you'll probably also enjoy what we are trying to do today. 
Yeah, I do. I really like the mission. I read about what it is that you do, and I really uh, support as well as appreciate what you are doing for uh, promoting coding in general. And I just want to thank you for the great work you're doing. Oh, totally our pleasure. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, so, uh, it's, uh, when you mentioned the Sandeep in you know, Soham also is, is very keen on uh, coding. Of course, he started uh, much earlier, uh, uh, just like Kashvi, maybe what in the seven? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and uh, but and now he's 16, right? So, he's he he tells me, you know, that coding is not necessarily for computer scientists, it's it's for all streams, and and he really is passionate about it. He also asked me all these questions that why do girls not take up so much of the science and engineering? So it's one of his missions. And, uh, you know, he's been working on during uh, the COVID times on a couple of things. One is just understanding, applying code to understanding all the data that's been there. And then also, you know, trying to understand how he can create content, just like, you know, we have with Code Tigers that is dedicated for girls in coding. So I thought the match was really good. Yeah. That's very nice to hear. I mean, uh, he's, he's very young and he's passionate about so many different areas, which uh, kind of resonate with what we are also trying to do. I'm sure you would appreciate this, that there's a huge gender disparity in technology, even at the uh, highest levels and even at companies, uh, I mean, probably at IBM and Google and everywhere. The number of uh, female engineers is again very low, right? Yeah, so, very low. And and we what we also realized uh, it starts very early. Uh, so I'm very happy to see peop, uh, young kids like Kashmi start very young, and all uh, all all the uh, you know effort for the uh, uh, to parents who encourage kids at a young age because that's exactly what we want. Indian kids to do. There's absolutely no difference between uh, a girl and a boy as far as code is concerned. They're all equally passionate. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Very excited. Yeah. So I'm mean, very excited to see you, Kashvi, doing this so early. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, I think we've, uh, we'll probably be taking a look at Soham. I, I know you've made some uh, websites around uh, the work that you just mentioned, uh, that Gargi just mentioned. So we'll probably take a look at that uh, a little later. Yes, sure. Yes. Perfect. So, Kashvi, uh, back to you, over to you again. Yes. Now, uh, in the instruction box, it says we need more scrap metal. Can you get all the metal in this area? Now, in the game space, there are two scrap metals. One is two steps to the right. So, we move two steps right, and now we'll test it. This is called testing the code. Now the second one is two steps down. So we'll move two steps down and now we'll run it. So yes. we collected two scrap metals. Now Gosh, I click can, on can you click on the, uh, Sorry, can you go back uh, to the same level again? Okay. Uh, yeah, can you click on, can you click on run again? Yeah, can you now click on that show code button, which is there? Yes. Yeah. So for our uh, viewers, uh, this is the JavaScript code, which is at the heart of what we are trying to program. We are basically just dragging and dragging uh, blocks and putting them in a certain sequence. But this is the code at the back end, which is running. Uh, it's coded in JavaScript. And if you are able to read this small line, which is above the code, the, the text above the code, it says that some of the top universities of uh, the world, like Berkeley and Harvard, they teach code exactly the same way like Kashmir is taking us to our first coding lesson. So they, students learn to code using blocks first, and then they move on to other languages, which are text-based. So this is the general approach which the world is now following. Yes, Kashmir, you can click on the cross sign. Uh, you can close this window. Perfect. Now it says that go quickly, BB8. So 
again there are two scrap metals one is between the two metal boxes and one is two steps to the right so it's up to you what uh, which scrap metal you want to collect but i'll collect the one which is between the two scrap bo metal boxes so i'll move right and then i'll move up and now i'll test it so now i have to collect the second one which means I'll move down and then I'll move right. Yay, I collected all the scrap metals. Now Yay. I have to continue to go to the fourth puzzle. Kashmi, I see you clicking on that heart sign every time you do a puzzle. Uh, have you ever yes. clicked on the sad face? I'm just curious. No. Okay. <laughs> So now it says that watch out for the bandit. So uh, there are three scrap metals now and I'll do it by step, by step by step. So for that, I'll move down and move left. Now I'll test it. And I collected one scrap metal now. Now I have to collect the second one, which means I'll move left and then I'll move down. And now I'll run. Now I have collected two scrap metals so far. Now I have to collect the last one, which means I'll move down and then I'll move left. Now I'll run. Yeah, you avoided the, the bad guy there. Yes, mm -hmm. the bandit. Yeah. So now it says it's up to you, BB-8. So again, there are three scrap metals. And we'll do it step by step, which means I'll again move two steps to the right and run it. Now, as you can see, the second one is two steps to the two steps down. So I'll move two steps down. And I'll again test it. Now I have to collect the last one, which means I'll move down and then I move right. Oops, I oh. made a mistake. Instead of right, I should do left. And now I should test it. Kashvi, uh, a curious question. What if someone was moving the scrap metals also at the same time? Would you still be able to do it with the left and right? Can I repeat the question? What if someone moved the scrap metal while you, while you were going left and right? No, they can't move the scrap metal because there is no command for scrap metals. Ah. But what if they were able to do it? Would you still be able to find and you know go around and get the scrap metal? If like the uh, scrap metal is moving when BB-8 is moving, then it's a little bit hard. Yeah, but it becomes like a, you have to make BB go faster and then yeah. grab the scrap yes. metal, right? And scrap metal should go slow. Yeah. There's a very nice yeah. moment for you, Kashmi. Somebody says, uh, the, may the force be with you. <laughs> OK. So now in the instruction box, it says, we need four more pieces of metal. Can you find them? So I'll again do it by step by step. Uh, one is two steps to the down. So I'll move two steps down. And now I'll run. And you need to avoid these bad guys. Uh, is that right? Yes. Okay. In every puzzle, I have to avoid them. Yeah. Now, uh, the second scrap metal is one up and then one right. Now, again, the third scrap metal is between the two scrap uh, metal boxes and the fourth one is two steps to the right. The so last time I collected the one which was 
between the two metal boxes. So now I'll collect the one which is two steps to the right. That means I'll move right and right. And now I'll test it. So now I have to collect the last one, which means I'll move left and then I'll move up. Yippee, I collected all the scrap metals. Now I'll click on continue to go to the seventh puzzle. Ashu, I really like the way you're doing this because you're very methodical with what you're doing. You're running every line and then you're testing it out and then going to the next line because typically most kids, uh, Gargi, do not have that kind of patience. They would want to first code everything together, then they would figure out where the problem is. Yeah, very good. No, I think also the construct helps them think through it sequentially, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. Sandeep, in, in the in the tool, right, there is a way to also capture repetitive things like, let's say, um, like loops and uh, uh, if like, like you asked, right, if I hit or if I come across a bandit or bad guy, then move left or right. Okay, so conditional is also. Yeah, we do have conditionals and we do have loops. Uh, there are different blocks for that, but uh, they, they're not part of this activity which Kashmir is. Understood, yeah. yeah. Today, the two th basic concepts that today uh, we'll be taking everyone through are uh, sequencing and events. So we've just done sequencing where we're mm -hmm. just putting things together in a certain sequence. And now we're going to talk about how events can really improve your game and take it to a next level. Yes, now events will come. So uh, before I before you play that video, uh, Kashvi, I just have a question uh, that I would want to uh, pose for uh, Gargi. Gargi, uh, I, I'm sure you you probably uh, have not. Uh, I I don't know if you've seen something like this. Uh, we did discuss that uh, this was of course not available when we were in the school. Uh, just a question to you: Why should kids even learn to code, uh, what is the basic reason why we should ask uh, our young kids in grade six and maybe even younger. I hear that in a lot of other countries, kids start as young as grade one and they, they're learning code at least once a week. Uh, so it's almost part of your main curriculum. It's not mm -hmm. any longer an extracurricular activity. So why this whole idea uh, to make kids learn to code? Yeah. So. So I think if you see what, what Kashvi did today, right, she she had a problem, right? She wanted to collect um, certain things and, and she approached it in a way. So coding more than the exact lines of code that you run is really about problem solving, right? You have a problem. There are certain ways you can go solve the problem. How do you have to actually get on the paper and try it out one by one? So it develops reasoning skills very early on in kids, right? Which I think is is very critical. Whatever stream of work they pursue, they're going to be needing reasoning skills. So problem okay. solving, reasoning, I think these are uh, more, more than the actual lines of code that they write. I think these are, are very important. Um, the other thing that I've, I've seen, um, is also um, it's almost like a pa it's almost like a friend, right? The computer with whom you are interacting, you're asking it to do something. It's doing something is a is a big boost to your uh, both your sense of companionship. Then you know creativity stems in. You ask it to do more things, like you know you might ask just like Ashi was showing, right? You might ask it to do. Um, more intelligent things like uh, when you when you go to looping right and um, uh, maybe you ask it to say something you know uh, uh, make some sound make some video effect um, and I know Soham created uh, games that were not limited by what the curriculum or you know what what we could teach him to do I mean you introduce coding to them, you'll find them getting so creative, right? Yeah. So I, I think it's a it's a great way for also to for kids to bond with uh, with the machine and just not think of it as a terminal, right? Yeah. Um, so 
it's it's a re- i think the the relationship that you start having with your computer gets very personal so yeah reasoning boosting of creativity uh you know some companionship that that you can explore and then hone your skills i i would say all those are reasons for me to uh ask kids to start this as early as they can okay and uh, yeah, what would maybe sorry. the other yeah sorry the, maybe the last thing i would say it also encourages a lot of team work right sometimes some yeah. some projects are individual but sometimes getting together building a nice system is uh, together with your friends and collaborating i mean nowadays kids are designing online games right so i i think uh, it's a great way to inculcate teamwork and collaboration yeah in fact i remember somebody telling me once that uh, best code is not some flash of brilliance some genius doing it overnight and coming up with a great uh, you know line of code it's always done in teams so people will work they'll brainstorm they, they'll put a lot of effort and it always happens in teams yeah so in fact there is a term it's called pair programming so yeah. companies have uh, seen that the the best software is written when people code in pairs right i, I think there are examples in apple google ibm or the, the pair programming is really a well known i mean it was such a successful idea that it's like a well known coined term yeah in fact we also try pair programming with our young kids uh, at a very very early age and they love working in teams together so yeah right. something that we've also experimented and we've seen great results kids anyways love uh, you know they're very more social probably than even adults so they they won't want to interact yeah. they, they work much better with kids also agarni what probably would be the best age for a child to start learning code? coding you mean i mean as early as you can um uh wherever you know they can start start let's say interacting you know holding a mouse looking at the screen doing something what would you say so what's the best stage as in uh, as early as you can read honestly because coding doesn't have to be physically going up to a computer and typing out the code right even understanding what is happening so code is very right, intricate it's very beautiful if you try it even if you can read the words you can start reading at a very young age and understand what is happening yeah but i don't think first program or uh, it was in java so it was system.out.println and hello world but yeah. i think more than the word that i typed in the beauty of a computer saying back to me hello world yeah. was yeah. really fascinating to me it's what actually interested me in starting to code yeah Yeah. yeah when you when you're able to put together a line of code which works and it gives out an output yeah. even as simple as just hello world yeah yeah absolutely it's, it's a great feeling it's a great feeling you you wrote the code you know you debugged it you ran it and it's it actually does what you said which is maybe simple hello yeah so it i does, i i, I, I think feeling, kids, yeah. yeah so i think kids uh, today get exposed to technology very early they start playing with smartphones and uh, you know computers very early so as yeah. as early as maybe 4 or 5 years old and are, are, are becoming users of technology anyway exactly yeah yeah 4 or 5 year olds are quite savvy with smartphones so like i said i mean i don't think uh, you know as, as soon as you can and i think so and put it well maybe as soon as you can read maybe start start developing that thinking perfect perfect okay kashvi we are ready to start with the next level Ashwin, I'm not able to hear this sound. Can't hear you. Yeah, we can't hear this. Ashwin, can you stop the video and maybe reshare your screen? I think you uh, would want to reshare the screen again. Can you start from start the video? And start make a better the, impact. Please start the video, Kashvi. Yeah, go back. Thank you. Well, hello, my name is Sharita Carter. I am a senior creative producer here at Walt Disney Imagineering. 
I'm responsible for leading teams that actually produce the attractions that our guests get to experience. So we are always looking for ways that we can improve and make a better experience for our guests. And technology is at the heart of that. Congratulations, you did it. You programmed BB-8. Now I think we're ready for something harder. Let's go for it. Now that you've learned the basics of programming, we're going to go back in time to build your own game, starring R2-D2 and C-3PO. To make a game, we need to learn about something that game programmers use every day. They're called events. Events tell your program to listen or wait for when something happens. And then when it does, it performs an action. Some examples of events are listening for a mouse click, an arrow button, or a tap on the screen. Here, we're going to make R2-D2 move up to deliver a message to a rebel pilot and then move down to the other rebel pilot. We'll use events to make him move when the player uses the up-down arrow keys or the up-down buttons. We use the win-up event block and attach the go-up block to it. When the player presses the up arrow key, the code attached to the win-up block is run. And we'll do the same thing to make R2-D2 move down. Now, instead of writing all of the code to control our droid in advance, we can let R2-D2 react to button press events that move him around the screen. Step by step, your game is getting more interactive. So now in the instruction box, it says that R2-D2 I need you to get a critical message to the rebel pilots. Make R2-D2 move when you use the arrow keys. Gargi ma'am, would you like to answer this puzzle? What is the puzzle? Uh, it says that R2-D2, I need you to get a critical message to the rebel pilots. Make R2-D2 move when you see use the arrow keys. Oh, okay. When you use the arrow keys and what's the commands? Okay. So when up arrow, you got when up arrow, then you have to move uh, the droid up. Yeah. Where is the droid? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's okay. Cool. And uh, where is the rebel pilots? Sorry, Kashvi. Uh, the My rebel yeah. pilots are here. Okay. In and the that's in the, in the middle. So we I have to go to both, right? Yes. So I should pick the shorter one. So I should actually go down. Can I? Yeah. Go down. Yeah. Perfect. All right. You can use the screen keys also, or if you are playing on phone, you can use. You can touch the screen, or if you are in key, uh, if you are in laptop or desktop, you can use the keyboard keys. Perfect. So I think now, Gargi, you uh, if even if the characters move around, you can chase them around because now we have the event blocks to help us around. Ah, yeah. Okay. So yeah. the event is really signaling that where I want to go, and then yeah. then you can follow that. Okay. So what are the different events we have? Up, left, down, right. Yeah. The four the mouse moments. The four mouse. Uh, the four arrow keys. Okay. And and Sandeep, this is more a question for you. And could an event also be um, like click, like mouse, cl right click, left click, or this is just yes. up down? Okay. Yes, not in this activity, not in this hour of code activity, but in uh, other activities, definitely yes. Okay, got it. Yeah. So now okay. in the instruction box, it says get to all the rebel pilots as quickly as you can, move in all direction. So. When up arrow press will go up, when down arrow press will go down, when left arrow press will move left, and when right arrow press will move right. Now we'll run. I use the keyboard keys because it's easy for me. Yeah, much easier, I think. Now in the instruction box, it says, reach the rebel pilots. Let's add points. Add points when R2-D2 gets each rebel pilot. Get 900 points to win. So in this question, you have to be good in maths uh, because we need 900 points. 
and if you drag the points option there is only 100 so 900 uh, and there are three rebel pilots so 900 divided by 3 is equals to 300 that means we set the score to 300 and now we run okay so every time you get a rebel pilot you get 300 points yes and okay. it's not and in last it would be 900 yeah okay but i could also code it for uh, maybe more than uh, 300 points and maybe just get one rebel pilot and still get more than 900 points i'm yes, a developer it can i can be. clear out I, yeah i i, I think <laughs> ashi was trying to be fair and make yes. sure everyone had yeah. 300 yeah. but i could, i could decide not to yeah yeah now in the instruction box it says watch out for the stormtroopers i'll read it by sentence I'll read it by sentence and sentence. I'll make divide this. So first sentence says that at 100 points when R2D2 gets a rebel pilot. So I'll bring an event option for rebel pilot and then I'll add 100 points. Mm. So Ham Bhaiya, would you like to solve this? Puzzle? Sure. Yeah, you need to come. Actually, we're getting all of us involved. <laughs> yeah. Pasu, can you tell me the puzzle question again? Uh, watch I'll, out I'll for stormtroopers. I'll increase the screen size a little. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Kashi. Watch out for stormtroopers. Add 100 points when R2-D2 gets a rebel pilot. Remove 100 when he gets a stormtrooper. Get 200 points to pass this puzzle. You can use the minor to make it easier. Okay. So now when you have when you get rebel pilot, you'd add hundred points. When you get stormtrooper, yes. then remove hundred points. And when you and the pass the puzzle is the same as minor here. Uh, yes, you can use the minor to make it easier. Like if you get a storm trooper, then you'll not win because the points will be less. So then we use when we get minor, then we add 200 points. Uh, would you like to play some sounds in every event? Sure, Kashi. Can we select what kind of sound is playing? Yes. You can select any of these. Uh, let's go with R2D2 2. Now should I press run? No, the when we get minor, shouldn't it be two hundred points? Uh, there is no option for two hundred points. It's only hundred or three hundred or thousand, and below hundred is fifty and ten. Maybe you get hundred and then again add hundred. Yeah. Add another block for hundred. Add 100. another block. Now should I click on run? Yeah. Kashvi, if we make a mistake, please let us let please be easy on us. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So now in the instruction box it says I'm seeing signs of increased activity on this planet. Add three puffer pigs to the planet, then go get them. It clearly says that says that we need to add uh, three puffer pigs. So we'll simply add three puffer pigs, and then we'll run. Okay, that one was really easy. Yes, it it is a very easy puzzle. Now it says that it's up to you, R two D two. When you get a taunton, make two or more Minox appear. Get eight Minox. Uh, I can add two or more, but I'll add two this time. And now I'll click on run. OK, so in this case, an event triggers two more characters to come up on the screen. Yes, when we get a taunton, two Minox will appear. OK. 
this is look this is looking like a very interesting game uh, something that pro we probably might have played i can easily relate to it now <laughs> now in the instruction box it says that they are multiplying can you make two or more mouse droids appear every time r2d2 gets one mouse droid get 20 mouse droids so okay. i'll add three mouse droids this time because last time i added two minox and then I'll add points also. And then I'll play a sound also, which would be Max Droid 1. Okay. Now I'll cl click on run. So as you can see, first it was uh, it there was only one mouse droid, yeah. and now you can see there are so many mouse droids. Yeah. Are we getting to the end of it? Yes. Now it uh, says that time to visit another planet. Use the new commands to change your droid and its speed. Then get the rebel pilots. So I'll set droid to C. 3PO and then I'll set right to a fast speed. I can use normal, slow, or random also, but I'll use fast. just learned everything you need to know to make your own Star Wars game. Now, there are no more instructions, no puzzles to solve. You can make your own game, and you choose how it works. One more thing. You've unlocked new sounds mm -hmm. and new commands mm -hmm. to do even more. So we made a game, basically, where you get points when you get puffer pigs. The twist is every time you get a puffer pig, a stormtrooper appears. Well, eventually, the whole screen's full of puffer pigs. And then I think when you touch 10,000 of them, they get that. We made a game where you can't lose, and everything you kill gives you points. For my program, I reverse the keys. So whenever you click up, your character goes down. Whenever you click right, your character goes left. So it's really... You know, sometimes you just get an advantage, you know, an inherent advantage when you're uh, the developer of the game. Did I get it? Yay! Get it. Oh, yes, I did When you're done making your game, choose share. To get a link, you can share with friends or play your game on your phone. Have fun. So now, uh, in this puzzle, we'll create a game, and in the instruction box, it says you're on your own R2D2. You have all the tools you need to create your own puzzle. Feel free to explore and play with all the different commands and events. When you're done, press the finish button to continue. Okay, so this looks like a free play where we have the building blocks and we can use whatever we would want and uh, create yes, our own. In this puzzle, we'll create a game. Okay. I'll just do the basic commands, uh, basic events. These basic events are in every game. Yeah, the first thing that we would want to do is make the mouse, uh, the arrow keys. Yes. The events for the These arrow are the keys. The basic events. Yeah. Now I'll add characters. I'll add a stormtrooper and I'll add another stormtrooper. Then I'll add a tauntan. Then I'll add another tauntan. Now I'll set the speed of the characters. And then I'll set the speed of tauntan. Now I'll grab an event option from the tool box, which would be Taunton. When we'll get a Taunton, 
uh, we'll get 100 points and uh, oh, and when we'll get a taunton uh, a rebel pilot will appear actually two rebel pilots will appear so uh, now i'll set the background also the background will also change uh, the background would be hot and then uh, the droid would also change uh, wait i forgot to put this droid here yeah. now i'll change the droid also uh, uh, the droid would change to S3PO. Now our event is done. Now I'll grab another event, which would be Stormtrooper. And then when we get a Stormtrooper, uh, our points would decrease by 100. And then we'll add another character that would be a mouse droid. I'll add two mouse droids. Wow, it's already a long program. Yeah. There is more also. <laughs> and it's looking like a very interesting game. I'm so looking yeah. forward to playing it. Background would be Starship. The background would be Starship and the droid would change to R2D2. And then we'll grab another event. That would be Rebel Pilot because we added a Rebel Pilot here. So when we'll get a rebel pilot, uh, our points would increase by 100. Our points would increase by 100 and then uh, our background would be changed by indoor and then our droid would be changed by S3PO. And uh, I'll play the sound. I'll play the sound at last. So I'll grab another event option, which would be for mouse droid. The mouse droid, and then I'll remove point from mouse droid. I'll remove hundred points, and then I'll change the background again which would be hot and then I'll change the droid also which would be R2D2 and at last we'll grab two event options three event options which would be when all when get all rebel pilots our game would be ended as when and it would play a sound of a plus. And now another event option, which would be when all get mouse droids, our game would end as loss. And then our background would be also change, which would be special. That sounds now like I'll a very, very interesting and complicated program already. Yes, and now I'll change the sound in every event. Kashvi, uh, I'm going to stop you there. Uh, I mean, you can keep coding. Uh, Gargi has to leave, so uh, yes, you can keep, yes. keep coding. Yeah, yeah. Soho will be there to continue, Sandeep and Kashvi. But Kashvi, it was an absolute pleasure meeting you. And may the force be with you, as someone said. And we'll get this complicated piece of program running okay and you should definitely watch star wars and see all these interesting characters and what they do thank you thank you so much for taking out the time this morning gargi to be with us and uh, we okay. really really appreciate uh, leaders like you joining this movement here in india because we really would want to encourage as many kids to 
join in. Uh, no, it's, a, it's an extremely important mission. I, I, you know, it's very close to my heart, which is why you will see it reflect in my kids, right? So, uh, you know, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now I'll play the sound, which would be yes, yes, Jonathan. And then I'll add the sound to other events also. And now I'll add the last sound, which would be RTB2. So uh, I think we are done here. And so, Hambhaya, would you like to add on something in this game? I just want to say this is such a cool program at my age. Yeah. I've never been able to imagine this. This is honestly so cool, Kashi. I'm so proud of you. This is great. So can we try and run it now? Okay. We have to watch our first um, troopers. So the good guys are uh, the mine Rebel ops. Pilot and Taunton. Okay. And the uh, bad guys are the stormtroopers. Stormtrooper and mouse droid. Mouse droids. Yes. Okay, changes the uh, I lose because I collected all the mouse droids. Okay. That's okay. But I'm sure we can do a lot more with this. Yes. We can try and do many. We can add more characters, and we can, uh, you know, change. We we can probably even add some cheat code in this, where we always end up becoming a winner. Okay. Yes. But you. Okay. Great. Awesome. Now I'll click on finish, and I'll just copy the link. So for all of the for all the viewers who are watching this, uh, you can click on this link which is there. Once you click on finish, you come to this screen with this pop-up. You can copy paste this, share it with your friends, family, and you can also post this on your Facebook and uh, Twitter handles and share it there. And please don't forget to tag us. Uh, please don't forget to tag the Code Tigers uh, team. Uh, we would love to see your games that you've coded. So our Facebook handle is coming on your screen now. And uh, that's our Twitter handle. We'd love to see what you guys have coded at your end. Yes, Kashmi. We can click I'll on click uh, on done. Okay. And uh, uh, after I click on done, uh, I'll get a certificate by tapping my name. Oh, wonderful. And then submit. I got a certificate now. Can you click on that certificate? Okay. Uh, just click on that certificate. OK. Yeah. It, so this is what the certificate is, uh, looks like. You, everyone can make a certificate for themselves after completing this activity. So all of you just finished your first hour of code. Uh, and you can print this certificate out, frame it on the wall for your child. Uh, it's, it's a really cool thing to have and, and kind of show to everyone else that you've participated in an hour of code activity. Just to let all of you know, the R of Code is an activity which uh, promotes computer science. Uh, it's a global movement, and it's a one-hour introduction to computer science with a specific focus on learning code. Uh, it has been taken by over 100 million kids across 180 plus countries already. Some of the very senior people, uh, like President Obama, the President. Canadian Prime Minister Trudeau, a lot of Hollywood celebrities and other people have joined this movement. So now the R of Code is the largest learning event in the history of mankind. And it's a flagship event of Code.org, uh, on whose website we all did this activity today. And Code Tigers is the first international partner of Code.org in India. 
so we we love doing this activity with you kashvi today uh so hum i hope you also enjoyed it as much as we all did it was honestly so interesting so because when even 5 years back these environments were so new that none of us knew about them right so we still yeah. use android studio which had one black screen in javascript and then one runtime log that says your code has failed please try again yeah. i think this job drag and drop makes it so interesting for the young people especially and it yeah. simplifies coding to a level where you don't really need to know that high level of computing to be able to run these programs right it helps yeah. make it so that anyone can run these programs as long as you drag and drop which is honestly so good yeah 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 the focus here uh, by using these drag and drop blocks is uh, on uh, just learning the logic behind a particular program and not the uh, not worry too much about the syntax of the code so uh so am i know you you've also been doing some real good work uh, bagi told us about some of that uh i have some uh, uh some of these websites that i know that you've been working on would you like to tell us a little bit about them and uh, maybe we can show them to our audience as well yeah i think it's really good Uh, are we going to start with the COVID analysis? Because whichever whichever one you would want, I have. Yeah. Uh, which, we can start with COVID analysis. COVID analysis. Okay, great. Yeah. Just a second, everyone. Yeah, so I think the back story is I'm in eleventh now, so I had to write my ICSE boards this last March. Okay. Interestingly, they stopped midway through, and our whole plans of partying after our ICSE boards was completely destroyed because of the okay. pandemic. Yeah. So I think after being sad for a few days, I did realize that this also gives me an opportunity to actually learn about data science because. I mean, you've seen my mother also helped me throughout this project, so I think hats off to her. But um, yeah, so I think one second, let me just open it up. Yeah, so it's in a reverse chronological order, so I keep updating it backwards. But essentially, yeah. So these da this data is completely public; anyone can access it. I've shared the links on the website as well. But what I've done is I've seen how has the number of cases, the number of recoveries, as well as something which is a reproductive factor, right? A reproductive factor means for if I infect one person, how many people is that person likely to go ahead and infect? So I've done that for various countries to just to see how India is doing compared to the other countries, right? And this is over a time span of the last sixteen weeks. So I've seen how has the lockdown impacted it, and when it's interesting to know that when the situation in India actually skyrocketed was about three or four weeks back, I believe, when Unlock 1.0 was announced. That's essentially when the uh, cases started rising at a very exponential rate. But if you look at the graphs, right, because of India's vast population, the reproductive factor or The number of people being affected currently is quite less because, and that could mean a good thing or a bad thing because it means that right now that many people aren't getting affected. But it also implies that if we don't take care of ourselves and if we go out in the open and don't follow the norms, it also implies that a lot of people actually can be affected, right? Because there's just our population of 1.3 billion. We have to follow the norms, and yeah. So this is basically the difference in situation between March seventeenth and July twenty first. You can see the graphs, right? Before I think there were around two hundred cases, and we've moved to nearly, I believe, it was twenty four lakh cases. This was as of July twenty third. So I think since Unlock three point zero started, there has been an exponential rise, which is worrisome, and I think we really need to move in towards. 
reinstating the lockdown, which I believe is being done in some states, but it has to be done worldwide just because the situation is so bad. Mm -hmm. um, this was a part of a summer course I did at Princeton where uh, we tried using statistical methods to try and estimate and predict how many cases would there be. So if you just scroll down, I think, okay. yeah. Uh, I think it's called hypothesis one. It's just a little below. You want me to scroll further? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is this? Yes. These are the four hypotheses I wanted to test. First, I wanted to uh, help estimate how much, how many daily tests are being done in India, which I predicted to be two hundred thousand. I predicted that there are at least fifteen thousand cases happening in India, and four hundred daily deaths, as well as twelve thousand recoveries. And my okay. goal was to use different statistical methods to prove this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's quite interesting. Uh, so, um, yeah. I'm I'm so impressed by what you've done. Uh, a lot of kids uh, chose to play a lot of games, and uh, you know they they've got all the time these days. And I'm very happy to see you doing something very different with your time during this lockdown. Very very interesting. I mean I just yeah. like math and I just think that computer science and maths are very heavily relying on each other. Yeah. So this was part of, this is, I believe, we're gonna, something we're going to learn in math next year, but I just figured I'd get a head start and in a way also validate some thoughts I had. So here what I've done is a normal distribution curve, right? Mm -hmm. So, and these confidence intervals tell me with how much confidence can I say that the number of cases, if you scroll down a little bit, I think it's on the next yeah. slide. Oh, yeah. So if you look at those, the first graph tells me that with 65% confidence, I can tell that the cases are between these two intervals, right? And uh, so then you have 95% confidence interval, and then you have the 97. Okay. So what, what I'm trying to, and the last graph is the probability that the number of daily cases is higher than what I had said. Okay. Uh, or, you know, in this case, it's the test, right? So if you look at the final graph, it says there's a 61% probability that India is conducting more than 200,000 tests a day, which is great, honestly. Yeah. Okay. So if I may ask, what is the which website or which platform did you use to make this uh, website? Oh. So this website was made on Google Sites, but all the graphs were plotted on Jupyter Notebooks, which I ran on my local system. Yeah. OK. So uh, did you actually have to write any specific code, or uh, you pretty much uh, had to use only Google Sites and play around with the interface? Uh, for, so Google Sites, uh, there is an option to use the HTML code, but I found the drag and drop interface to be easier for me just because I wasn't familiar with HTML when I created this website. But obviously you can make changes in HTML because not everything is drag and drop. If you want to customize it, that's also an option, okay. which is great because it's easy to use. And if you want to make it more advanced, you have that option. Yeah. And did you learn any of this in school or anywhere else? Or was it all uh, self-learning for you? So uh, the statistical and the COVID analysis part of it. So, I mean, uh, I did most of this through online courses. There was this Harvard Python for Research uh, okay. course on Coursera. I did that. I found that to be really helpful. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, so I think the, the issue of it not being taught in school was prevalent a few years back, but I think with Coursera, EDX, and all of these online yeah. uh, platforms yeah. coming up. I don't think accessibility to it is any more an issue. Mm -hmm. As long as there's a drive, we can learn pretty much anything in today's world, which I think is great. And um, especially during the pandemic, right? Coursera went free for all of these courses for that time, just because they also realized we have a lot of time on our hand. So I think that was great on their part too. Excellent. I'm so happy to so impressed to see uh, you making such a nice platform uh, and showing the information. Very nice. OK, so uh, that's pretty much uh, uh, from our side, guys. Uh, we 
are towards the end of the show. Uh, we have a lot of people asking when are we going to come on this, uh, come next. So for all of you guys, uh, we run the Code Tigers live show every Sunday at 10 a.m. So it's uh, it, it, the time is set in stone. So we meet on Facebook and Twitter every week. Uh, sorry, Facebook and YouTube every week. I'll share the links for you uh, on your screen. You would see that. So yeah, that's our Facebook page and that's our YouTube page. We stream every Sunday at 10 a.m. And we would have a young coder just like Kashvi and a slightly older guest just like Gargi every week. And they would try and do a new activity each week. So please feel free to reach out to us in case some of you guys are interested in joining this wonderful world of uh, code and you would want uh, any kids uh, to learn to code. Uh, you can reach out to us. You can click on this link and reach out to us or you can even call us up on this number and feel free to do that. Uh, so looking forward to meeting all of you guys next week for a new activity with a new guest, with a new child. Uh, I really had a lot of fun uh, with both you and uh, both uh, Kashmi, you and uh, so I'm lovely interacting with both of you today. Kashmi, great job on that code. You should honestly teach me sometime. I, had, I was so confused what you were doing in the middle, but it was so great, honestly. Yeah, yeah and, no, uh, Kashmi, you truly inspired and made a lot of uh, fans today for yourself. I mean, we, we do see this show giving the opportunity to kids uh, and and we the idea was to bring a lot of these a lot of you uh, and showcase what you guys are doing just like soham showed his work uh, and bring the older guests who can inspire a lot of young kids uh, but what i also see happening is when we see kids like kashvi and you soham we see you guys doing what you guys are doing at this age uh, i I, I can really say that we feel very inspired. We we feel what we've probably missed out in work when we were uh, in school. You know, we Thanks. absolutely had nothing like this, uh, and we were probably not even aware of what we would want to do at, back then. So yeah, amazing work. And you guys Thanks. really inspire people. Uh, you know, kids like you and Kashmi really inspire not just kids of your age, but older people like me as well. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Oh, all right, guys. Okay, guys, so thank you so much for attending the show today and uh, looking forward to meeting everyone the next week. Bye, take care. Bye. Bye, Bye. Kashmir. Bye, Soham. Bye, sir. Bye. Okay.